the night dozens of people arrested during those huge Columbia University protests back in April have just been told they are not going to get prosecuted. I want to show you some of these folks speaking outside court after the DA's office said in just the last few hours they don't have enough evidence to bring cases against them. But the effects of these college protests still being felt by some schools. Look at Emerson College now planning layoffs because enrollment has gone down and the schools blaming partly student protests. Writing in an email obtained by the Boston Globe that the staff reduction is because of those protests targeting our yield events and campus tours and negative press and social media generated from the demonstrations and arrests, as well as national enrollment trends and issues with federal student aid. Antonia Hilton is outside court where those Columbia hearings have been taking place. She's joining us now. Antonia, this was, I want to say, the lead story on so many national news, news broadcasts for days. What was happening with these pro-Palestinian demonstrations that were in some ways taking over college campuses coast to coast? Now, a pretty significant update from one of the schools at the epicenter of this. That's right, Hallie. Some people here on the ground have been a bit surprised by this. So 31 of the 46 people charged in connection to the occupation of Hamilton Hall have had their charges dismissed entirely. Another 14 were told basically that their charges would be dropped if they had good behavior for the next six months. But they refuse that deal. So those 14 will be back in court in late July, so just a couple weeks away. There's really only one person who it looks like is going to face major consequences, and that's a guy named James Carlson. Mm. Our colleague Tom Winter covered him extensively. He was the guy whose face was plastered all over the place in the days after the occupation. He is described as an outside agitator by many people, not an affiliated Columbia student. And he's the only person who is right now facing some of the serious charges, uh, like a flag burning, for example. Uh, and so, you know, for many students, that means that now really the remaining piece of this is the internal discussion, the hearings that are going to happen at Columbia. Are they suspended? Are they expelled? Are they able to return to school at the end of the summer? That's what they're waiting to hear about. What about Emerson? We talked about the, the president of the school blaming partly, right, not entirely, but partly the protests for declining enrollment here. Do we think Emerson is an isolated case or maybe indicative of a broader trend? Do we know yet? You know, Holly, it's an interesting question because, you know, while Emerson has written about this, the Boston Globe was able to obtain information about it. Schools are talking a lot about these issues, but they haven't yet been able to demonstrate necessarily that hmm. these trends are connected to the protests. What we do know for sure is that administrators at many schools from the Ivy League all the way through are saying that they're having some trouble raising money. So hmm. as they go out to alums and ask for people to donate, to contribute to the endowment or different programs to help them build a new building on campus, that's where they're running into issues, where there are alums who are unhappy with the way that those administrations have managed the protests the encampments at their schools and now they're holding back and that's expected to affect some of the programming and the opportunities that they're able to provide students this year and, and maybe for years to come. Antonia Hilton live for us there in New York. Antonia, good to see you. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.